How y'all doing? It's your boy JC and welcome back to Perfume Mirror. How you doing? This fine Monday morning bliss. Or it's windy. I don't know. It's been pretty windy over here. I ain't gonna hold it to y'all. Yeah, we're back with some more Perfume Mirror content. Shout out to PDR Rook. Shout out to Balcony and everyone who's watching. We made it to chapter seven. Now the question is, will we get a good ending? I feel like we're on the route to get a good ending if we made it to chapter seven. That's my theory because last time with doing Jules route, it could have been very easy to miss chapter seven's uh, route. We could have died easily. So if us making it to chapter seven makes me confirm that, okay, we're there. So let's see if we finish chapter seven this episode. I want to, I would hope. All right. So that's right we are on our way to i forgot Bruh. well when alan still unheardly turns the keys in the addiction read astonishingly doesn't mutter a no rush alan's eyes flicker transiently to the rent rear view mirror as though already expecting to hear the complaint that doesn't come it's a loud and clear declaration to how testament reed is to deny himself a pretty remark a petty remark over the thund thunderstorm building outside, the judder of Reed's fingertips colliding with the upholstery matches the muted swishing of the windshield wipers. It's easiest to start anew, quickly becoming nothing more than a background ambience, like the rain on the windshield or the sporadic beeping of Alon's phone that accompanies you all the way to the city center. Yeah, yeah, are we here? We finally arrive at your de destination, the bar it, Visa Visa the perfumery the howling wind and the storm outside intensifies chilling you to the bone in the second you step out second you step out of the vehicle the cute swishing of a opening umbrella the reed grimace as has greed grimace as he slams the door closed behind himself pointedly not looking at alon leisurely strolling oh down God. the street sorry not really sorry hey you looking good today hey can you help me read? Bruh. All right, stop. Preserved from the couch and even a driplet on the pristine suit before Reed can voice his grievance at the injustice. You can catch him by the sleeve and tug. It doesn't need to be dragged and halfway through the door, he's the one pulling you along. The heavy raindrops drum over your head like hell. In less than a minute, it takes you to reach the entrance you're positively drenched from the waist up. You pause briefly and excel with relief when the drain drops are cut off with abruptly as they begin to assault you. Reed, however, doesn't decrease his pace, drawing you downstairs without a stop. The cinch of alcohol seep that seep through every surface of the bar makes it impossible for you to make out the emotions. Lingering or fresh, there's only the aroma of mixed liquors and quality coffee, punctured with a whiff of various sweet syrups, notably fruit and ginger. Continuous rip spite from the external sensation as is as relieving as it is discon. What are these words? Let me just get in here, bro. Dang. When you step in the storage room turned office, you notice that Alon didn't fall you down. Yes, you just <laughs> strolling <laughs> towards the main entrance earlier, but you assumed. If anything, he'd overtake you. Seeing your puzzled expression, Reed explains offhandedly that if the bar was open from both sides, given that the list of people Alon trusts is less than digit long, either Dia or Colton has to be present. Thus, it's norm that he would stop for a chat with them first. But he doesn't always flee to his responsibilities by jet setting, but jet setting on them on one, to one of his people. Well, whatever might have happened to the warrant a personal visit from him. The additional support doesn't ease your mind. That, plus the fancy barrier installed around the perimeter, means you're as close to being safe as one can be within the walls of the bar, and more so. In spacious employees' lounge that Reed guides you to. It's so different from the tiny cubicle you're used to at the perfumery. The only thing that the two rooms have in common are the unique chairs that bought most likely the during the same auction but that's about it even the lockers here are made of thick impenetrable metal and require a code to unlock though not all of them are sealed it's amusing detail especially when all reed pulls for out from one of those is a stack of neatly folded white terry cloth that he then dumps in your hands one would be enough you expect a rejoinder tough luck you get a non sequitur Instead, you look like a drowned rat. You look like a wet rat. Here, let me help. What? What does that mean? 
aiming and throwing the clo the closeted closest towel you have at the hand square at Reed's head. You're treated to an indignant squeak that has you doubling down in hysterical laughter. Reed ducks before the clock can strike true, but the damage has already been done. Rude. He tisks with no real malice as he bends to pick up the towel to fold neatly and set aside. The freshly washed. Yeah? Did Alon buy you a washing machine to add to the... You wave your hand in the direction of the bathroom where you know there is an honest to F shower hidden by the thick gray waterproof curtains. Honestly, a new addition wouldn't be would have surprised you in the slightest. Might as well. It saved us all that walking to the laundromat. The laundromat across the street. <laughs> yes, Reed's poor legs indeed. If you annoy him long enough, you know he'll finally cave. Just to have you shut up. After all, he did acquire the uh, keys to Alon's hideout. Reed huffs, he doesn't deny your claim. After all, he did acquire the keys to Alon's hideout, somehow. You can wonder how much begging it took him before Alon relented. That relented at all isn't that out of ordinary, and wouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who saw the stack the room is. No wonder Alon tries to act tougher than he needs to, if the truth came out that he coddles his lackeys, his reputation would as stone cold bastard will be ruined. If, of course, anyone could believe it. You know what, I always thought that this is was a bit of an overkill. Reed's closest to the first locker and riffles through another, retrieving his personal towel, a wide black one made of what looks like to be microfiber which is better for hair or so he says anyway yeah and you know how alon gets really he's here once in a blue moon but he's always yapping and that he doesn't want us waddling around and reeking of sweat because it's a semi-serious establishment not a zoo but what if the the zoo animals pull through which is aka rednecks wanting a white claw what you finna do about that then alon drying his hair with one hand Reed uses the other to mimic quotation marks as he delivers a near-perfect impression of Alon's, up Alon's put upon tone. Which is great and all, you know how it gets after midnight. I just wish the shower was mandatory for clients too, if you catch my drift. Yikes. You didn't need a reminder of how lucky you are to snatch a job at the perfumery. Anyways, here's your- here, take your pick. Stopping by one of the shelves, Reed beckons you- toward what you identify as a pile of clothes, spare uniforms to be exact. The dress shirts are clean, still smelling faintly of antibacterial laundry detergent. Neither of them belong to Reed. The fabric for one is too simple and not translucent enough for him to swink about it. Besides, you'd sooner see pigs fly than uh, Reed sharing, shared, wearing shared clothes. Unless, he starts gesturing at his own still ajar locker. You fancy something comfier. But I only have this little thing. This being an expensive designer jacket, at least two size two sizes look too large. That Reed does uses to fit all the extra layers under it when it gets cold enough to wear it warrant it. Downright shocking, though to see there's only a single spare. Man, this wording is so uh... Guessing the budding question, Reed nearly loses his eyeballs with all that rolling that ensues. Had other things to worry about than keeping my locker full. I didn't say anything, but you wanted to. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Where are you going? You, uh, you asked both to stop this stupid argument. And because after picking up his compact dryer and spare clothes, Reed began to move in the direction of... No way, you're not going to shower. Uh, yes, I am. Reed opens his arms wide as if somehow you missed the state he's in and he feels the need to demonstrate. I'm all wet and grimy. You're a big whiny baby. That's what you are. Making use of his distress, you snatch a spare shirt and the jacket Reed offered you earlier and all but duck into the back room, bathroom. You'll have to manage. You add, closing the door, thus bearing Reed to access one of his to uh one his one and true love bathroom fixtures your pyric victory however is a short one once you're out reed retaliates in no time connecting his portable dryer to the socket turning it on then directing the nozzle straight at your face he's already dressed though his hair is unmade 
and the need for revenge makes him forego the peat preening and sprucing up. Unfortunately for him, a whiff of warm air is far from unpleasant. Nice and warm, hmm? You know what else would stop it? You're saying, taking, uh, the, taking the dry out of his hands to do the work for yourself, distracting him in the process. Don't you have the dress code? One that includes actual dress shirts? Not something that looks like you're trying to win a wet t-shirt contest? Yup, we sure do. Reed pops the pee, his lips immediately curling into a shit-eating grin. Won't Alon be pissed? That smirk grows. <laughs> Who knows? Ah, understandable. You have no questions left. Halfway into your half usual, usual half squabble, half colloquy, that doesn't end even after you leave the staff room, you realize you're in a much better mood. It quivers when you re enter the office to still see it empty. Reed nonplussed, if mildly annoyed at being taken basically in his pajamas mid cooking, only to Terry when no one brought you, there is nowhere to be frown found. Well, you're not exactly idle in the meantime. You want a drink? Now? What the heck? R5 image. Hey, uh, PDR Rook, you gonna have to fix that. Something wrong with the code? Yup, Alon's pain. In that case, how can I refuse? If anything, I'll give you something to do with your hands. Caffein caffeinated or alcohol? Man, just water. I don't need all of that. You need a sober mind to handle whatever it is Alana is about to throw you in. Make yourself at home on the couch observing Reed bustle around. All right, so we're going to skip a couple of this stuff because it's just a lot of reading. But um, presents a drink to her. All right, D Alana's voice is coming. D is also coming as well. What up, ho? Nigga senpai. Darling, Dia's verdant eyes slide over you, then rest on Reed's sleeping form. She smirks. Should I wake him? You address Dia, but then Alan, who answers, putting down his cell phone, then picking it back up again when it pings shortly after. Don't bother. We'll finish. We'll be finished sooner without his input. True that. <laughs> True that, bro. Since Reed can sleep through anything, neither Alan or Dia bothers to keep their voices low. Neither do you. When you ask, now much louder. Finish with what? You hope what includes an explanation. It might come as a surprise to you, but the incident with Victor wasn't last. During the last time you've been away, there's been another casualty. Who was it? Dia waves her hand, meaning is clear. Doesn't matter. The point is, the homicides didn't stop when you went underground, which is important counter evidence. With that, the eyes of the SPD and the ACB are diverted from you. Diverted, perhaps? Just don't let yourself be fooled thinking that they will let you off the hook. It's an adjournment, plain and simple. So they want me arrested? Ideally, they hope someone can handle the persona non grata in their steed. In secret or otherwise, plainly speaking, they prefer you more dead than alive. You presumed as much. Either you want you dead, sent, or sentenced, the SPD won't have them to explain themselves for wanting to use a civilian to close an unsolved case. Something that's illegal, even in Lazar. Officially, that is. Without direct witnesses, there will be less fire for the SPD to pull out. Put out. Your disappearance will be crucial mitigating measure to shield themselves from the public eye. It wouldn't be even be the first time when a persona of interest was found dead either in an accident or by suicide. Every time there's a talk about rogue mercenaries and such, everyone who dares to put the blame on the government's machinations is called a fear monger or conspiracy theorist. Since you're already mixed up in something bigger than a regular murder case, even if you were to clear all of the charges, it would make you free of danger. And that realization fills you first and foremost with anger. Oh, screw that. It's that saying it lightly. You don't even get to enjoy having the SPD technically off your back before another problem caught you in the chokehold. Would the SPD or I guess the higher up send someone to finish me off? I highly doubt it. As I said, they prefer to use others to do their dirty work. Mm, well, he would know all about that, I suppose you suppose. Most likely the culprits or should I say culprits. So it's confirmed then. There are more than one? Great. It gets better. They're both shapeshifters. Oh, joy. Uh, don't be such a doubter. Easy to say with the renowned, renowned lawyer as her cousin and the small fortune inherited from her dearly departed husband, not to mention her own wealth. 
Even if she was a five, she'd still have more than enough means to escape a Lazar if she so wished. Not are all this lucky. She, we low-key can escape too. What you talking about? The scales can be tipped in our favor. I don't see how we can turn the tables. Or are you saying you have a way to sneak us out of the country? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's sweet. You think it'd help you. Hypothetically speaking, don't you think the shifters have the means and necessity to follow you out wherever you might hide? You should understand that SPD could do more than imprison you. Like what? Did you, didn't you just announce that they would strike me first? They can also nudge the perp in your dis direction. Their goals are, after all, aligned. If they, so if I want to be free from the SPD, first I need to take care of the shifters? Just so. But what's stopping the SPD officials from arresting me anyway? Not what, but who. Who then? You, darling. Dia's lips retain the chuffed curl like a cat who got, who's got, or is about to taste the cream. Sorry, what? It's simple. You have to make it seem as though all you did was assist the government. You can't hide. On the contrary, you can. You should make your contribution known. Contribution to what? Contribution to what? Catching the culprit. Naturally, if such a thing could even be done, since you're the only one we could trust. It could be argued that way Dia practically swept you off the streets to offer you a job without checking your background with your only admittance about your affliction was careless of her. However, you've grown to realize that she was darn she's daring. First and foremost, she's calculated. She understands people like you, hopeless, without a choice would cling to the first rope that was thrown their way with both hands, afraid to get back in the water. There's no fealty, but fear and gratitude, buying tighter than devotion. When Dia says that there is no one she can confide in, she's not lying. She's always been selective who, with whom she shares the information about of her existence. Second, about the existence of her second business. Besides you, there is, or was, only a handful of other employees which is way less than any other successful perfumer manufacturer has, at least to your knowledge. Y'all have to shorten this PDR that Effer Marco, for example, has at least 70 people under him. And taking into account that dealing with perfumer is nothing more than a hobby for him, that says something. Of course, he could have managed to be indiscreet. His late father influence and status could give him the right to feel untouchable. People like Dia, conversely, are more methodical in their approach, not of fear, but out of wisdom, hard-earned experience. You never meet and you, me you never meet the other runners, of course, which is another of the precautions Dia implemented, and thus far it served you well. You will be tasked with your usual duties, excluding your store shifts, as it is irrelevant at this moment. Wait, you want me to just return to work? Yes and hope that one of our next transactions is to be is uninterrupted by the perp then what then we'll count on the acb to clean up the acb why would they help us inside of politics the a the spd and the acb's respective chiefs chiefs can't stand each other perpetuation of their ongoing conflict of interest will be to our great advantage how come you're a five nigga senpai if that gets out, the SPD will want to claim you first. They have the right to draft you if they so choose. They will do if the ACB expresses even a hint of interest in you, which given your tear and affliction, it is more than likely. I am trash if I can't beat Sylvia, bruh. Draft? But I don't- Calm down. It's just a speculation. But you said you need to be prepared for that possibility, whether it comes to it or not. There's no point in dwelling on that now, darling. Deatis shooting Alana glare he doesn't acknowledge. But just in case, make sure to abstain from using a lure from now on, unless you can't help it. That better be a critical choice, because I'm going to use that boy. Too late. Now it's going to be on all you think about. Okay, then once, then once we do catch the culprit, should we just hope that ACB shows up or the warehouse is still under surveillance of the SBD agent? Well... Two, to be exact. And you don't sound troubled about it. Why? Because one of them won't meddle and the other... Well, let's say she'll act as your backup. Oh, oh. And we can trust them? Absolutely. We have something she wants, and it's a complete matter of cute pro quo. And the second one? 
He's paid well enough that staying out of our way is in his best interest. I guess you'll have to take his word for it, huh? What about Flavio? The Chief Officer Fortin, who coincidentally is the one who, who wants you out of the picture, offered him a plea bargain, which he refused. We have no grounds to prove his in innocence when he himself has confessed to shooting Donegal. If he took his words back now, he could have tried again under lying oath. With all the official documents gone, there is a scant evidence, mostly circumstantial, to support or disapprove his innocence. But he's not taking the fall for you, if that's what you wanted to know. They arrested him for. Glancing at Reed for the first time since he entered the room, Alon clicks his tongue drifting off. Another offense. That clearly won't be discussed. Something probably dealing with Reed or something. All right then. Why don't you take a second to think it all through? It's a lot to take in. I already took a second. I took a minute. I took an hour. Just don't take a whole day. We don't have that much time to dwaddle. Double standards much? Still, when Dia beckons Alan towards the staircase for a five minute break, Alan doesn't refuse. All right. I know you're awake, Reed. Instantaneously cracking his eyes open and what like a wind up tool, Reed doesn't feign ignorance. I was kind of figuring he would be awake. He wouldn't be asleep. He doesn't ask how you figure it out. Since the mention of another offense, he went so still, you were worried if he was still breathing. Penny for your thoughts? Ten bucks for yours. Sure, you take care. You take it. Clearly, he doesn't want to be the one to start. Otherwise, you'd be arguing with Alon five minutes ago. We're kind of freaked. That's an understatement, but go on. I guess we have to put our trust in that contact of Alon's. What? You can't be seriously considering this. You heard everything. What else can we do? Reed opens his mouth just to close it right after. If. If? He hums, turning his head to the side, stalling, but you wait him out. If you agree, it doesn't have to be you, you know? The lure, I mean. He's not as angry as I expected him to, to be, and he's and that means he's plotting something. You don't like that at all. Since we're taking our chances either way, it's just as well it could be any... You're not volunteering. Just hear me out. No, you... I mean, we should go together. Or not go at all. You know what I'm saying? So we go together. Sharply, Reed takes, shakes his head as though you don't get it at all. How about we skip town? Hell, skip a Lazar while we're at it. You want to make a run for it? Okay, so this is the same, like, situation with, uh, Jewel. If we do, even if we do touch down, where would we go? There's a place. Remember, there's someone who owes you a favor, I know. It's my mother, actually. You could say that. You're floored. Not to only hear him speak about it, which such an easy demeanor. You'd contact her. His own volition? Live with her? Depend on her, possibly for the rest of your lives? But you hate her. Reed shrugs like he's really considering it. Like he didn't spend years refusing to give his mother a second of his day. I'd hate for you to die more. Oh, what about Flavio? Hate? It's his life. He knew that he what he was doing, joining the effers. You don't mean it. He deflates. No, I don't. But that doesn't mean I can Look, I'll think of something. Later. With a shuddery exhale, Reed gets his feet uneased, rolling from in in ways we really need to get out of here before we continue to ourselves killed get ourselves killed though. It's a gamble, Reed. Both on both of the plans. Yeah, but if we make it off, we won't risk you being discovered. But your mother, if that's the only thing you're concerned about, don't be. I could swallow my pride, you know. Uh-huh. You pay to see that, honestly. Reed humbling himself. What a notion. Why don't I show you then? Stay in face the, the downfall or flee. Both can end up with your blood spilled on the pavement. What do you say? And tempted as it is, I don't think we could just hide from this. It's too big of a case. It you then, belatedly, that it was an idle proposition. We was being genuine. If not for your refusal, he'd really dash with you. No questions asked. You don't want to make him decide between you and his brother. What's our decision? Oh my god. Nearly three weeks later, definitely seems like it was for the worst. Not because something happens, it's be but because some nothing happens at all. It's strange. Normally, life goes on as it did before the incident, except you're told non-stop by the agent Alon mentioned, feeling her eyes from every dark corner. It's less scary than it sounds. Once you get used to it, her silent propicuity becomes almost comforting. Without the threat of the SPD butting in, you're allowed to settle on something resembling a schedule, the oddity that you never had a chance to partake in. You and Reed spend most of the mornings at a hotel, 
paid for up front by Elon. Needless to say, you're still not used to the luxury. By night, you find yourself meeting with the clients where he's right beside you, and so is your backup, hidden from the view. Your, your, it's your fifth run so far, but every workday comes and goes similarly, utterly, uneventfully, uneventful. There's something in the air, though. Tightness, feeling you can't shake off. Tonight's meeting was well set at the warehouse. The same one Victor was killed, the building still stands. The odor of decomposition is worn down by the wintriness. The first time you hear you're late. Okay, so let's skip a couple of this. They're going to be pissed. Yeah, we're kind of, yeah, we're late. Well, f, f them. Greed sniffs. It's, it's like our fault Alon couldn't be bothered to come earlier. Well, then in we go. Okay, so they're walking in. The sound of your fall seems strangely booming. Through your shock, you understand you raise your head and it wasn't a noise of your body meeting the ground, but a gun being discharged. You're alone. Reads inside before you can scramble upright. The rapid gunfire falls with the sh shot pierced through the window, leaving dents in the holes in a place of others. Wait, what? Wait, what? Hold on. Wait, you're three steps in. The wind is still slashing at your leg. A thick metal door slams down, speeding like the blaze of a guillotine. You it's only, uh, uh, it's, and it's only Reed's reflex that pushes you out of the way at the last second. Throwing outside with a racket, uh, painfully banging your knees on the, oh, so we get shot and Reed saves us. What the? You're alone, Reed's inside. Your throat becomes stuffy. Wait, do we get shot? Throat becomes stuffy, muscles paralyzed. No, no, no. Oh, dang. Everyone drop your weapons. Oh, we were, we were not supposed to use our allure. The word whizzes to a stop and you with it. Two guns sink to the floor. Nearly perfect sink. Four faces swivel to stare at you with a similar expression of astonishment. One of them smooths out, and another familiar scrunches up in a frown. Ah, oh, fuck. There's a laceration on Reed's cheek. Oh, okay, so I didn't really kill him. Why are we worried, Dan? His wound, however, isn't only the source of the odor of copper. There's four people reclined on the cement. Three dead, one alive. Why do we always pull up with no backup? Uh, one, uh, one alive, lying flat on their face with Nino's knee holding them down. The agent looks away first and completely bored a continuance. Well, dang, you're something else, aren't you? You suck at defending. Okay, so we've seen this in uh, Jules' route. So we got a bottle for Premier. Yeah, so this is... Oh, so this is kind of like a copy and paste type beat. Read? You bite out of you as you can muster. The adrenaline squeeze over your throat. Mm-hmm. I'm so angry with you right now. You don't sound anything other than weak, though. Did you know they'd show up? Was it a... Trap, speaking hard. I can't have you die for me. Well, that's not really your decision to make. Really, what happened to we go together or we don't go at all? So we go together, not die together. What's the difference? Dang. Don't say that. Why? It's true. You're my only family, Reed. Is it so weird that I don't want to lose you? What now? You ask not letting go. I don't know. Neither do you. You're about to find out. Dang, bruh. Uh-huh. Oh, so then this is where we get ID, huh? Okay, so if you guys remember, stumble outside, we run into Reed, but this time is a little bit different. And we get a true ending one. So there's two true endings. End of the demo. Okay, okay. So let's go back to the Reed's route Bruh. and see if we can get a different ending. All right, so I'm going back with Laurent's route and I'm trying to like pick the right options. So let me see. So this one right here says, take the key, don't take the key. I'm gonna take the key. So this is the choice that really messed me up. Go after them or stay and observe. We still get a neutral ending, what? Okay, let's go back. Don't take the key. Let's try to love them up. Trust him. 
Okay. So when we don't get this apartment keys, there's dudes that pull up to us. Okay. What is this? Okay. He's gone and you're as good as dead. Send us for life for two second degree murders you didn't commit. Oh no. That's a bad ending too. And then you die there. Yeah, um, I'm not too sure how to get Laurent's end. I've literally spent like, I tried everything. I don't know if there's like a concrete, like exact way, like you, if any of y'all know how to get there, I might try it off recording and see, but I think we're done. I think we're done. I don't know. I feel like we're done. I milked this game long enough. Yeah, man, this is actually pretty dope. So thoughts, thoughts on the read route and thoughts on all of this. So of course on part eight, which it's crazy that we made it to so many parts. The part eight was like part where I really thought we were done with the game and I did my thoughts. I guess I didn't really put into perspective of like the fact that this is still a demo. So like, even if I feel some type of way about the game, there's it still works. But for like a demo perspective, I don't think this is bad. I do feel like if the demo is a demo, the they could take some pointers and tips for maybe some criticism, I would say. So my personal criticism, I feel like for a demo it should have been a little bit shorter. To me, a demo doesn't feel like a, I mean, I guess t technically speaking, this is not like to, you know, the perspective of like the game, it's not really like done to the story. So like, it kind of feels incomplete to me as far as the story goes. And that's just because of the fact this is, it's a demo. But if this is how like the game is going to be like the full game, I feel like they could shorten it up a bit if they're gonna make each chapter like this and if th this is just the handful of chapters we get the dialogue was my main issue like i'm not even gonna lie like i love how they written the dialogue i love how they formed their words how they they matched each sequence to each of the, the characters personalities like i think that was really dope they're really good at writing this if this shows anything pdr rook is really good at writing um stories but sometimes it's just dragged out i don't personally like it when it's too long just to say one thing it shows like how cool and like witty the writer is but it also just feels like it's just too much you know what i mean for like one part especially again going back to what i said in album light where in my review of that game is like i want 50 50 of the game playing the actual game you know what i mean it's still a game and at the same time 50 percent of the story with a visual novel it's hard to balance that because sometimes the whole premise of a visual novel is to it's just pretty much a novel in a game but i feel like those things can be cut out and they can make this more of a visual novel game than just a novel that we're just reading um so cutting out that dialogue is crucial for me personally also if this is a, the same kind of start for the full game you know the different routes and you got reed and and jewel i do feel having it a little bit different from each other would make it very crucial now it was different but there's some parts that was kind of justifiable like i'm not gonna say disown those parts but um the, impo the important parts was like the end of the game and i could see how like even if i didn't get laurent's chapter 7 ending i still feel like chapter 7 ending for laurent is would probably turn out the same way as like everyone else's chapter 7 ending so i felt like if they're gonna do something like that with the full game's ending they need to switch it up in a way so like i can go and start a different route and have completely entirely different endings different you know what i mean because i feel like they're they're at the right path they're at the right path when it comes to like the choices and like how it changes the game like this is really well done work for someone who's you know new at coding and it's like I, I believe a one man team from what I saw in the HIO page. But my only issue would be is just like it just feels kind of copy and paste ish. Other than that, honestly, if the dialogue was shortened up and we get more of game uh, mechanics. So like the story is actually pretty interesting. I like the concept. I like the idea of like we're on the run and we were framed for a murder that we didn't do. And I like the idea of like each character has their own personality, their own issues. We're putting to certain scenes that really favor that character's personality and issues um, in a way. But by far, I personally like Jewel's route more. I felt like we were more connected with Jewel. I felt like the relationship made more sense, in my opinion, if I had to pick any. Reed is questionable because, you know, it just depends on whether you personally like Reed and maybe for Laurent. But in the full game, I would love it where if we had more scenes that builds up the development between the characters. So pretty much 
they're doing it great where how like okay pick a love option pick this pick that but i want to have more moments and scenes that make me really want to fall head up over heels for jewel you know what i mean i don't want it where it's just kind of rushed or like oh we're childhood friends i'm supposed to like her you know like i want to for the viewer's perspective we just started playing the game how can you convince the viewer that this relationship is actually worth it you know we've been childhood friends like how can you convince us like oh snap y'all really are childhood friends and so that's my issue is just there's too much talking and less like actual experience actual doing things in the game it just that's an, a broad critique but for the most part the game does it, it a well like a very well good job at like sequencing the dialogue and sequencing the routes and keeping it consistent with this concept in the story so um, i'll give it that i just feel like if you take in consideration of my critiques though this will be a fire game i'm not even holding it to you this will be really fire a really fire a, n a novel but yeah i'm feeling a seven out of ten on this you know if i had to put a score i don't like to put it in a bracket but if you want to know my full thoughts i feel like a, a strong seven out of ten um my only concern is like with the patreon avulsion is like the perfumer avulsion is the full game but then pdr rook is working on the demo for that one which doesn't make sense if perfume is the demo so but it is what it is i personally would want to just wait until avulsion is fully out but we do have Am Almagam on the list as far as games to play. But that's going to be a while, guys, because we got a crap other ton of games we got to play. So, but thank you. I think this is just going to be it. If I do, if I do get some responses from y'all on how to get a different ending. Honestly, I don't think it would be that deep. But if you would really want to see it, I'll probably like link it in the Google Doc Drive in the description. <laughs> Of me getting to that route if not you know i'll play it on my on my alone time and see how it uh transpires but yeah that's pretty much it guys um yeah again phenomenal game good job pdr rook and shout out to balcony for recommending as per usual if you guys want to see what i do when i'm not making youtube videos twitter but I don't, i'm not even tweeting i'm not a twitter person you know what i'm saying i just update y'all if i can't do it in video form and of course if you want to see other content that's not videos twitch stream links all in description as far as anything goes with series and games on the channel i'm gonna wait until i finish midnight train which which we're almost done and if you haven't heard of midnight train cue card interesting game so far yeah i'm gonna probably take a a, a break you know what i mean like press on the brakes a bit as far as starting new series series right away i want to finish these two series and then then we'll go from there either way y'all stay blessed keep your head special i'm gonna see you when i see you Peace.